video, we shall be discussing how John and Moses learnt great lessons in a lonely place. We often think of loneliness as a negative feeling, and being on our own as a state to avoid at all cost. However, there are certain times when being alone is actually a blessing. This is because when we are so full of self or preoccupied with our relationship with others, we naturally become God empty and then find it difficult to really maximize our potentials. In fact, there is a unique kind of creativity that comes from knowing that you only have God to rely on and no one else. Moses was one man that definitely knew how that felt. Moses was born in Goshen to Israelite parents, but later he was brought up in the pleasures and comfort of Pharaoh's palace. However, to prepare him for his work of delivering God's people from Egypt, God, through a series of circumstances, moved him to the wilderness where he was groomed for the work ahead. Exodus 24, 12 and 18 KJV And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give three tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and gat up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. Years later, Moses spent forty days and forty nights at a stretch, without food and drink, in God's presence up in the mountains to get the Ten Commandments. This was because he was used to staying on his own in the wilderness previously. It was for this length of time spent that Moses was God's confidant. And because of this, he wrote five books in the Old Testament that have given us a clear picture about God. Exodus chapter 34, KJV. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew these two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face was shown, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them, and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off, until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again, until he went in to speak with him. It is amazing to see how our mind works in times like this, to bring solutions to human problems. Sometimes comfort and creativity just don't seem to agree. This is because pleasure, fun, and entertainment has a way of distracting us from what we really need or what really matters. According to Bible history, Apostle John was subjected, just like the other apostles of the Lamb, to various persecution, but he refused to budge. So the persecutors took him to the island called Patmos and left him there to die a natural death of deprivation and lack. However, it was on this island that he received the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 1 through 19 KJV. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. 
and he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God in the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins, in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God in his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last, I am he that liveth, and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. John said something that is very significant. We must take note of it. He said, I was in the Spirit in the Lord's day. This signified that he was in spiritual fellowship with the Lord. He was not lamenting the situation of despair, but he was high in spirits. We can find out we are suddenly alone or on our own when people desert us and when we have less things to distract us, even if it's usually not something we plan, but we can purposefully get into a place of being alone with God by choosing a time of meditation in God's Word, prayer and fasting. Fasting and praying in spirit is a way of depriving your body of pleasure and comfort so as to receive clearer directions or receive the Holy Spirit's power to break addictions. Matthew 17, 21, KJV Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. This was Jesus Christ's statement. Also, fasting causes us to become more sensitive and gain access to the creative mind of God. Isaiah 58, 6 and 9 KJV Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Then shall light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. 
The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. 1 Corinthians 2, 16, KJV For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, how do we maximize our secluded situations for creativity? Or how do we connect with the mind of God for creativity? Number one, we must understand that moments like these are to bring out greater things in us. Romans 8, 18, KJV. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Number two, we must subject our senses to thinking the way out solutions, not the problem or situation. Luke 15, 14 through 20, KJV. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Number three, we must organize personal prayer and fasting seasons where we fellowship with God read and studying his word. Jeremiah 33, 3, KJV. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So here are some very valid reasons why we should deprive ourselves of excessive pleasures and comforts to engage our mind. Number one, solutions to problems can be created. Genesis 1, 2 through 3, KJV. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Number 2. You are a problem solver. Isaiah 58, 12, KJV. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Number three, you have the creative power and mind in you, the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 16, KJV. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, John 16, 13, KJV. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Number 4. You will become closer to God. Revelations 4, 1, KJV. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Number 5. You will operate in the glory of God. Isaiah 58, 8, KJV. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your creative mind, given to me in redemption. I receive grace from you to subject it to creativity. I free my mind of every distraction and feed it with your word. In Jesus' name, solutions shall flow through me to fix challenges. I rejoice in my situations, even if they are contrary for in them I can become greater and better. Amen.